Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're taking a look at another America Bomber plane design. To refresh our memories, the America Bomber project is exactly what it sounds like it is. A German project to make a bomber that could strike America. Previously, we looked at a rather conventional bomber with quite an interesting myth surrounding it. Link to that video in the description. Today, though, we're looking at a plane that was anything but conventional, especially by World War II standards. A rather bizarre-looking flying wing with a multitude of jet thrusters seemingly strapped to the back of it. This is the Ahado E-555. Now, in terms of German aircraft manufacturers, the name Ahado probably doesn't immediately come to mind. When stacked against companies like Junkers, Messerschmitt, Dornier, Heinkel, etc., Ahado designs and products just weren't that prominent, and especially weren't prominent on the battlefield. They just didn't have many successful designs during World War II. In fact, their most produced plane for World War II was a trainer, the AR-96, and their second most produced plane was a recon seaplane, the AR-196, and even then, the total production of both of these combined was less than 3,500. In terms of frontline standout aircraft, Ahado did not stand out. But where they do stand out, to me anyway, is in two specific areas. The first thing, unrelated to today's topic, but interesting nonetheless, is the fact that in 1936, the company's owner, Heinrich Lube, would refuse to join the Nazi party and was promptly arrested and the company was taken over by the state. The second thing, actually related to today's topic, is that their proposed projects, and especially those proposed later in the war, were either cutting edge or just bizarre. In the former, we have something like the AR-234, the world's first successful jet-powered bomber. In the latter, we have the 555. The 555 was a late arrival to the America Bomber Project. While most of the designs in the project started between mid-1942 and early 1943, Ahado only began designing what would end up being the 555 in late 1943. And even then, the design was only brought into the America Bomber Project sometime in early 1944, as part of a request by the Reich Ministry of Aviation to study and design a long-range, fast, jet-powered bomber. Despite their late entry here, Ahado jumped right in with gusto and would design not one, not two, not three, but at least 10 different variants of the 555, each a little bit different for the consideration of the German government. As the 555 was part of the America Bomber project, the most important thing for it to have was range. For the 10 different available design concepts, the estimated range generally sat somewhere between 2,500 and 5,000 miles which on the upper end would be just enough to fulfill the America bomber mission. Additionally, as it was to be a fast jet-powered bomber, all of these design concepts would have to have great speed as far as bombers were concerned. For all 10 of these designs, the projected top speed sat between 530 and 630 miles an hour. If they could actually achieve this, Allied conventional propeller-powered aircraft would be effectively powerless to stop the 555 in any of its proposed configurations. The fastest propeller aircraft the Allies had, something like the Spitfire Mark 24 or the F4U Corsair, their top speed was nearly 100 miles an hour slower than the 555 the Allies would have to use their still-in-development jet fighters to properly counter and defeat it, and these fighters at this point were rather sparse in number. For the 555's armaments, it would ideally carry a decently large payload and would have an array of defensive turrets. In an internal bay, it would be able to carry around 4,000 kilos, or 8,800 pounds, worth of bombs. Because of its sheer size, it likely could carry more, but as it was a long-range bomber, 
a lot of the weight and space of the plane would be taken up by fuel storage. Defensively, it would be armed with six cannons at three different locations. A forward-firing pair of MK-103 30mm cannons would be placed on either side of the cockpit. A remote-controlled turret with two MG-151 20mm cannons with 360-degree rotation would be located just behind the cockpit, and another remote turret with the same gun setup would be at the rear near the fuselage and the engines. For the body design of the 555, most of them would follow a similar flying wing concept. The main differences between them lie in small adjustments to the wings and fins or changes in the number of engines. Because there are at least 10 of these, let's briefly go over each of them and how they differed from one another, and I'll put up design images and specs for the ones that actually have them. The first design, the 555-1, and probably the most commonly seen design when it comes to model aircraft, had six BMW 3 jet thrusters in the back, on the top along the center line. It featured a gull wing design, something that would remain in all of the variants, and had vertical fins where the arch of the gull wings were located. The wingspan would be around 69 feet 7 inches, and the overall length would be around 60 feet 4 inches. The 555-2 would basically just replace the six BMW engines with four HES-11 engines, with two on top, two below. There were no substantial changes elsewhere. The 555-3 would replace the engines once again with just two BMW-18 engines, one on top, one underneath. Again, no substantial changes elsewhere. On the 555-4, we start to see some changes in the body design. It appears as though the plane is a little bit longer now, but I can't find specifications as to how much longer. An additional engine is added to the design, one on top, two below now. The 555-5 doesn't seem to exist as of now. Perhaps they didn't want an additional 5 on the design name. On the 555-6, we see our most radical design change yet. Keeping the same engine configuration as the 4, they substantially increase the wingspan to 93 feet 2 inches and substantially reduce the overall length to 40 feet 6 inches. The central fuselage is noticeably shorter as well, and the overall design is more angular and sharp looking. For the 555-7, the size of the previous variant is scaled back a bit and the engines are slightly adjusted. Now having two engines on top and one below, the size was scaled back to 82 feet 8 inches wide and 28 feet 10 inches long. Now on the 555-8 we have our new most radical change yet, and a twin tail slash twin boom is added with a connecting surface between the two tails. One would assume it was added for stability and control reasons, but I could not find any given reason as to why it was added. I could also not find the plane's new dimensions with this tail, but it is safe to assume that it at least doubled the overall length. Then for the 555-9, we keep the twin tail concept, but remove the connecting surface between them and add horizontal stabilizers on each tail's outer edge. It effectively looks like a more conventional tail was cut in half and spread apart. For the 555-10, we add some horizontal stabilizers on the inside of each tail, and we actually have design specs again. With this new tail configuration, the new dimensions were 77 feet 8 inches in wingspan and 63 feet long. And finally, our last design variant is the 555-11, in parentheses 14. This much more conventional design just looks like a normal plane. An additional engine is added, bringing the total up to four, and two of them are placed on each wing next to the fuselage. The engines may have been swapped out for Junkers made UMO 12 jet engines. The wingspan would stay the same as the 555-10, but the overall length is increased to 82 feet 4 inches. 
the 11 also increased the bomb payload by 50% to just over 1,300 pounds. This concludes our quick summary of the variants, but as one final note on the body designs, you may be wondering both why there is no 555-5 and why the 11 variant has a 14 next to it. In all likelihood, there were at least 14 different design variants originally, but some of these designs were thrown out almost immediately, and some of the numbers were changed around to make things more succinct and sequential. So the 555-11 in reality was originally the 14, but when other variants like the 11, 12, and 13 were eliminated, the numbers were switched around a bit. This still doesn't really answer the question of what happened to the 555-5. Because the numbers were changed to make the variants sequential, it would be rather odd to exclude the number 5 just because the plane was called the 555. I think the most likely answer here is that some of the design documentation for the 5 was lost or destroyed, leaving a gap in the series today. With all of that covered, we still have to find out what happened to this project and this series of 10 or 11 or 14 different jet bombers. Inevitably, like a great deal of German experimental planes at the time, the project was cancelled out of necessity, and it also had technological issues to boot. By late 1944, Germany's situation with the war necessitated the cancellation of projects that weren't for the defense of Germany. The America Bomber project had already been cancelled by mid-1944, but the 555 was allowed to continue on. However, by late 1944, a long-range bomber project had no real purpose at this point. They needed fighter planes, tanks, and guns to help defend themselves against the Allied forces now on their borders. They didn't need bombers that would strike on the other side of the globe. Additionally, technology for the 555 simply wasn't there yet. The proposed engine for most of the 555 variants, the BMW-18, was not complete by the time all of these variants were designed, and still wasn't complete by late 1944, and would actually never be completed. For the 555-11, using a different engine, the UMO-12, that also wasn't completed by late 1944, and also would never be completed. The Germans did have functional completed jet engines at this time, to be sure, but none of them were strong enough or large enough to push such a large aircraft. So, because they didn't have the engines they needed or a war situation that allowed for development to continue, all design work on the 555 was cancelled in late 1944. Remaining documentation on the 555 project is sparse, but it does live on as a seemingly popular model project for aviation enthusiasts. And quite frankly, why wouldn't it be? It looks really cool and different, and it's sure to stand out in a crowd. Alright, and with that, I think we'll go ahead and end for today. So, thank you all for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. When I first saw this plane, it immediately reminded me of the game Battalion Wars, something like the Western Frontier Strato Destroyer. Does anybody really remember that game? I think they need to remake it. I love that game. Somebody call Nintendo and tell them. While you do that, I'll sit here and wait for a remake that never comes, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned something. So, see ya!